Chapter Seventeen. I myself selected my parents. Before he left his mortal coil, Kondama Raju gave a piece of advice to Ishwarama. He said, "Ishwarama, the glory of Swami will spread to the entire world in no time. In fact, the world itself will undergo a great change. People from many countries will come here. You don't get deluded by the feeling." Swami is my boy, my son, and develop motherly attachment. Swami does not belong to this family exclusively. You are still immersed in the illusory physical relationship. All relationships based on the physical body are like fleeting clouds. Only the atmic relationship is eternal. Therefore, reduce your attachment to the physical body. Cultivate attachment to the atma. Advising thus, Gondama Raju put his hand on her head and blessed her. From that day onwards, Ishwarama started living in Prashanti Nilayam, leaving her house. She used to come to Swami's room every day morning and evening and talk to him. It is a fact that she also had recognized the divinity of Swami. Sometimes, when Swami appeared as Lord Ishwara, she got a bit confused, saying, "Swami." What are all these serpents? I used to pretend innocence, saying, "I do not wear any serpents round my neck." Later, when she looked at me carefully, she would not find any serpents over my body. Thus, she witnessed Swami's divinity directly several times. Same was the case with Kausalya, the mother of Lord Sri Rama, and Yashoda, the foster mother of Lord Sri Krishna. All these people used to live under illusion, out of motherly affection. Divinity is shrouded thus in mystery. Let me reveal to you a small miracle which happened in the present avatar. After the Prashanti Mandir was built, I used to take my meal in the room on the right side of the first floor. The Griham Amai Ishwarama used to come there during that time and pressurize me to eat more, saying. Swami, you are not taking sufficient food and hence becoming thin. Please eat more. I used to reply, Do I have to fight with anybody? Do I have to become stout? No, no, I don't like becoming stout. One day, someone invited me for lunch in their house. They wanted to kill me by mixing poison in the food. They were jealous of my reputation. That was growing more and more day by day. By the time I returned from their house after taking food there, the color of my body turned blue, and froth started coming out of my mouth. Then, I instructed Ishwarama to wave her hand in a circular motion. When she did so, Vibhuti appeared in her hands. She wondered how it happened. I have seen Vibhuti appearing. When Swami waved his hand in a circular motion, but how did it appear in my hands? In fact, it was I who granted that power to her for that short period. She then mixed the vibhuti in a glass of water and gave it to me to drink. The moment I drank that water, the effect of the poison disappeared miraculously. I myself have selected the parents of this body. Pet the Venkama Raju used to help the devotees a lot. Whenever they wanted articles like coconut or pulses, he used to go immediately to Bukkapatnam and get them. He did great service to the devotees. On the day of his departure from this world, he came to the mandir to see me. I had already selected some people for interview. As I was about to go into the interview room, he came and stood before the pillar. I asked him, "On what purpose you have come here?" He replied, "I have a small work with you, Swami. I wish to talk to you for a minute." I told him, "Wait, wait. I will call you after seeing these people." But he was in a hurry and said, "No, Swami. I must talk to you urgently." Thus he prevailed upon me. Then I told him, "Okay, come in." He used to keep all his money carefully wrapped in a piece of cloth and tuck it in his dhoti at the waist. 
In those days, there were no purses. He took out all that money and placed it in my hands. He then requested me, Swami, I do not want to die as a person indebted to somebody. I must be free from all sorts of debts. It is possible that I might have been indebted to someone to the extent of an anna or a quarter of an anna during my business transactions. I therefore brought this money to redeem myself such debts. This is the money I have earned by the sweat of my brow. So saying, he handed over some money to me. He also requested, Swami, I have kept apart five bags of rice and some pulses. I have also kept two packets of jaggery. On the twelfth day after my death, please arrange for feeding the poor with these provisions and money. He then went straight to his house from the mandir and called, Who is there? He was not in the habit of calling his wife by her name. Ishurama came out and inquired, What do you want? He asked her to fetch some water. He drank it and breathed his last. He died so easily and peacefully. He did not suffer for a minute even. He came to me, talked to me, then went straight to his house on foot, lay down and breathed his last. Ishwaramma too died effortlessly in the same manner. The summer course was being held in Bangalore then. She used to wish for the opportunity to be with Swami wherever he went. Therefore, she also attended the summer course. She felt very happy to see the boys attending those classes. She used to supply drinking water to those children while they were taking food. In fact, she used to think gleefully, Is it not because of Swami that we have this good fortune? One day, the children were being served breakfast as usual. She also had her breakfast and coffee. Venkama always used to be with her to attend to her needs. After finishing her breakfast, Ishwaramma wanted to have her palm. She therefore started pounding the beetle nuts with the help of a small mortar and pestle. I could hear that sound from my room situated on the first floor. Suddenly she called me. Swami! Swami! I replied, I am coming! I am coming! She again called, Please come quickly! I came down and she breathed her last. She had no pain of any sort. She did not suffer even for a minute. Both the parents of this body left their mortal coil in the same manner so effortlessly. Since Swami selected them to be His parents, their lives were so sacred and sanctified. Those who are pure and sacred will have a sacred end. This was true in the case of Kundamaraju, Peddavankamaraju and Ishwaramma. They were all selected people. Swami selected them. This was how the story of Swami went on. I did not cause even the slightest inconvenience to anyone. I did not talk harshly to anybody, lest they may feel hurt. If at all I wanted to scold anybody, I would just say, Dunnapota, he buffalo. That itself is a big reprimand so far as I am concerned. More than this, I do not know any other word to reprimand someone. Ever since my childhood, I have been making everybody happy without hurting them in any way. Some avatars had come as a result of the prayers of their parents. But in this avatar, it was I who decided that so and so would be my father and mother and accordingly granted them birth as such. This body was not born in the usual way in the ordinary parent-son relationship. It was by immaculate conception.